This little inside sneak peek on how I make videos for the channel. Uh, first off, you can use a website called Pexel, pexels.com. Pexels.com is uh, free stock videos. So what I do here is I go to explore, I go down to the free videos and I search something that has to do with my video. So for example, I just made a video about the 10X rule, Grant Cardone's book, and I needed a lot of people working, business videos, some inspirational ones, some success style. So I typed in hard working and what came to me was a bunch of these videos. So I just look through, see what one kind of works for my type of video. You can click it here, uh, view a preview, and then click the download button in the top right. And I did that for a bunch of clips. As you can see, they're pretty short. This one's a bit longer. This one's 19 seconds, but a lot of them are nine seconds, 10 seconds, very short clips. So you'll have to get a bunch of them and make them into the video. Uh, the other website that I'm going to use in the future, I haven't used it yet, is Video Blocks. And the reason why I like Video Blocks is because it's a subscription service. If you look at all of the uh, websites that sell HD video, they're very expensive. It costs up to $200 per video, and that could just be like a 30 second clip. So what's nice about uh, Video Blocks, also called Story Blocks, is that you can pay monthly uh, as a subscription service. So this middle one, $49.99, that gives you unlimited downloads of HD footage. Um, if you pay annually, you get 50%, but that's a lot of money for uh, someone just starting out making videos. So maybe just start with the monthly if you want to go that route. And if I search something like uh, working into the search bar here, you can see that you got a lot. Look at this, 49,419 results. Uh, that's a lot better than Pexels, which is like, uh, it says 900 here, but uh, a lot of them don't have to do with business. You really have to search through. So you got a much bigger selection on uh, the video blocks. For the thumbnails, I use Photoshop. Photoshop, I used to use Canva, but I like Photoshop. I got a bit more control over the thumbnails and the text. I also use it for slides. If I want to uh, put in some text from a book or a quote from somebody else, I like to use a slide. I like to use that black background with white lettering and highlight the words that are very important. When I'm all done with all my slides, the thumbnails, the images, and the videos, I pull them all up into Kden Live, which is a free open source video editing software. So this is a look into my uh, one video, the 10x rule again. I'll just use this one for an example because uh, I just finished it and it has a bit of everything. I got my channel intro that I made a while back, so I always plug that in first, and then I do uh, some voice recording. So for the recordings, I make a script ahead of time. I like to make a script because it makes sure uh, I have the wordings in the right place and the phrases and exactly what I want to say. I make sure that everything's there. Uh, that's why I use a script, and I talk a script. I talk it out a paragraph at a time. As you can see, you can just add a new track here. You might not be able to see with the Windows screen recorder, but you right click, add a new track, and you add an audio record track. And then clicking this big red button here turns it to yellow. And from there, uh, you can start recording your voice. So I just use the microphone on my laptop and I read the script. I read paragraphs at a time um, and then I re-listen to it, make sure it's right. If it's good, uh, I keep it in and I go to the next paragraph. Uh, you can cut and splice right inside the software, make sure everything is uh, succinct. Um, then here's me plugging in the videos. I plug the videos in the top. I like to use that wipe effect when I uh, change in between videos. The wipe effect gives a nice, oh, sorry, the wipe effect that gives a nice transition effect when you're going through. So you see, I got a bunch of clips here. I don't know, maybe 12 total clips in between. I got some slides that are left in between, just uh, helping me make my point a bit clear. Um, I also, I like to add a little music track in the background. It keeps things a little less empty, makes a, a sound a little fuller. So what I do is I go to a nice uh, YouTube playlist, uh, lo-fi hip hop instrumental beats, and I pick one of these uh, that says, no 
copyright music where it's copyright free. I choose one that suits my video and I use a ytmp3.cc, which is a YouTube to MP3 converter. I paste in the link of the YouTube video and then download. And once it's downloaded, I plug it in. And sometimes the track is not long enough. Uh, like my video runs longer than the track. So what I do, I just add that song in a couple times and make sure at the end of the one song, it transitions nicely into um, the start of the same song. After that, I'll just play the video over a few times and make sure that everything fits correctly, looks nice, it plays nice, there's no crackling or popping in the audio, which is a problem sometimes with the software. Uh, once everything's pretty good, I will go up here and I will click render and I will render that. Um, render to MP4, I'll make sure the quality is full and I'll click render to file. I'm not sure if you can see this pop up on the screen share, but that's what I do. It takes about maybe 10 minutes to render the video. Once it's been rendered, I go up to my YouTube channel and from my YouTube channel, I click YouTube Studio, I click Create in the top right corner, I upload the video, I select the file from my computer, and I already have some default text that I've inputted in the setting section that comes up here. And with this default text, I will just change it to match my video. I already have my watch later. I got my credits, my song credits. Sometimes I have a book credit, uh, the text, I link back to my website, and then the transcription for people in different languages to help transcribe some of these videos. Um, I upload the thumbnail that I created in Photoshop. If the video is part of a previous playlist, I'll add it here. If not, I'll create a new playlist. I think it's a good idea to always have videos in a playlist so they can auto play and it's good for your uh, viewers. If they like that type of video, they can keep watching a lot of the same content. In the more options sections, I add the tags. What I do for the tags is I try to find a video that is very very similar to the content that I'm uploading. If I find a similar video, I will use either vidIQ or TubeBuddy to see what tags they're using for the video. And I will copy most of those tags and paste it here. If the amount of tags don't fill up, I think you get 500 characters to fill your tags. I like to fill it all the way up to the top. If I don't have enough from the one video, I'll use a couple videos around the same content, fill the tags, make sure they're all related to my video. I will select the video language for English. Um, I I will not I will choose the recording date but I will not choose the video location because I found that if you choose the video location your hashtags don't appear under the video instead it shows the video location so I think hashtags are more important when I'm making educational content videos it doesn't really matter where I'm filming the video so I leave that blank and in the next section I will choose the video elements I will choose the end screen and I will choose the cards make the playlist and then for the visibility, uh, we'll make that public and then I'll post. And that's a pretty quick look on how I make videos for the channel. I hope this gives you some inspiration or some new ideas when you're making your own videos.